This is the second lecture of a classical explanation of two features. The first one was devoted to the analysis of the internal frequency of the electron. The frequency of the motion of the center of charge of the electron around the center of mass. The second lecture is devoted to the analysis of the spin of the proton. Proton is a system, a bound system of three quarks, and experimentally, people claim that the addition of the spins of the quarks do not give rise to the spin of the proton. We're going to see where we, we believe there is a problem with the addition of the quark spins to obtain the, the spin of the proton. Now, an alternative uh, title for this talk will be the proton spin crisis, which is known in the literature, this problem with the addition of the angular momenta of the quarks. Now, now the, the quark is a Dirac particle. If it is a Dirac particle, it has a, the following feature. The Dirac particle has two centers, center of mass, M, and center of charge. And because the angular momentum is always a mechanical property defined with respect to some fixed point, if we have two points, two centers, we will have two different spins. Now, let us call S the angular momentum of the quark on the Dirac particle to the center of charge. Let us call S CM the angular momentum with respect to the center of mass and O will be the origin of our inertial reference frame and we call J the angular momentum of this quark with respect to point O. This dotted line tries to represent that the, this object has a size or shape, but not, nothing less. Now, these three angular momenta are not independent because total angular momentum J can also be written as angular momentum with respect to the center of charge plus R cross P. P is the linear momentum of this Dirac particle in our reference frame, or alternatively as the SCM plus Q cross P. This relation can be used to represent in, in terms of each other the relationship between both spins. Now, not only they are different, they also satisfy a different dynamical equation. In fact, the spin dynamics of these three objects is are this. The time derivative of the total angular momentum with respect to my origin is the torque of the external force, external force defined at the charge position. The force F is defined where the interacting property of the quark is, is, is uh, established. The same thing happens for the center of mass spin. The center of mass spin dynamics is the torque of this force with respect to the center of mass. R minus Q is the, this relative vector. But the spin S has this dynamical equation independently of whether the, the quark is free or not. So it is time derivative is always orthogonal to the direction of the linear momentum. So this difference makes that, uh, in fact, this spin S is Dirac's spin operator in the quantum case, because in the quantum case, Dirac's spin operator satisfies exactly this dynamical equation. Now, the addition of Dirac's spin operator is not the total angular momentum we can obtain when adding the, the, uh, the angular momenta of the different quarks. Now, from this relation, we can obtain that the center of mass spin can be obtained from Dirac's spin S, R, R minus P cross, R minus Q cross linear momentum P. This is the main argument we are going to develop in this talk to consider that when computing the angular momentum of the proton, we have to add this 
angular momentum related to the center of mass of the object. Now, the standard model, the, the proton is a bound system of three quarks. And the three quarks are in an orbital motion of angular momentum L equals zero. This is the lowest admissible value for the orbital angular momentum of the quarks in this internal motion. Well, each quark is a direct particle and therefore is of a spin one half. The proton has a spin one half and, and, and the first idea was, okay, two of the quarks have the spin up and the other down, so that, so that one, one half plus one half minus one half gives rise to the proton spin. But if we add the three Dirac spin operators of the quark, which is done in the phenomenological models which describe the, the dipid interacting scattering to analyze the internal structure of the proton, we do not obtain the spin of the proton. In the literature this is called the proton spin crisis. But must be remarked that what in this model analyzing the deep elastic scattering, what are the, are the three Dirac spin operators? But the Dirac spin operators are the angular momentum of each quark with respect to the center of charge and not with respect to the center of mass. Well, because the proton is a bound state of orbital angular momentum equals zero, what we have to add are the three spins with respect to the center of mass of each quark. Now, let us see a classical picture of a proton. This represents a proton. Here is the center of mass of the proton at rest. And we call angular momentum of the proton, the spin of the proton, and the angular momentum with respect to this point. OK, what we have here are the three quarks, one, two, and three, the corresponding center of mass and center of charges. I have depicted here in red the equivalent of Dirac's spin operator, the center of charge spins of the three quarks. In this picture, in the center of mass frame, these blue lines correspond to the motion of the center of mass of each of the quarks. But you see, this is a plane motion, because the three linear momentum, the addition of the three linear momentum is zero in the center of mass frame, so these three vectors are collinear, and therefore, these three trajectories are contained in the same plane, in the pictured plane. These are the only possible trajectories in order that each quark has an orbital motion of angular momentum L equals zero. This, this dot here represents how is the motion of one of the center of masses of one of the quarks. We have to add to this the uh, helical motion of the center of charge of each one of the quarks. Okay, so each Dirac spin operator, the red vector, is written in terms of poly matrices in this form, each one for every quark. Well, the linear momentum operator for each quark is this linear operator, but what is left is to obtain what is the operator which represents the separation between the center of charge and center of mass of each quark to determine from here the spin with respect to the center of mass. These three black vectors are the three angular momenta which must be added to obtain the total angular momentum with respect to the center of mass of the quark. So, we see where is the problem. The problem is that the addition of only the center of charge spins can never give rise to the total angular momentum of the proton. Now, to compute what is this relative position operator, let us see what Dirac make when analyzes in 1928 the, the structure of the electron. The electron, of course, is a Dirac particle. And Dirac finds two additional terms in the interaction Hamiltonian of the electron. 
one coupled to the external electric field and another to the magnetic field, this D, which will be interpreted as a, an electric dipole moment, takes this form, in terms of Dirac's alpha matrices, alpha matrices are written in terms of uh, Pauli matrices in this form. This is a 4 times 4 Dirac matrix. Dirac didn't like that the electron had this electric dipole moment, and in fact, he never mentioned this uh, electric dipole moment in his book written in the 30s. But he was very fond of, of the appearance of this magnetic moment in terms of this g equals to zero magnetic ratio. Because with this magnetic moment was explained the Siemens uh, effect, anomalous Siemens effect, where S is Dirac's spin operator written in terms of Pauli matrices, but for Dirac this spin operator satisfies this equation. Well, in this equation, the velocity operator for Dirac is C times these alpha matrices. Alpha matrices which have eigenvalues plus or minus one. So in Dirac's theory, the velocity operator is moving at the speed C. But you, you see that this dynamics implies that Dirac's spin operator represents the angular momentum of the Dirac particle with respect to the center of charge. Okay, but the electric dipole moment, in our model is clear, is the charge times this vector separation, but if the Dirac dipole moment is this expression, if we suppress the charge E, the relative position operator is just this quantum mechanical operator written in terms of alpha matrices. This is what we need to compute finally the angular momentum of each quark with respect to the center of mass. Now, you see in our picture of a Dirac particle, this is Dirac spin, but the electric dipole will release this vector. I mean, if the charge is negative, will be in the opposite direction. But we have here that this relative position operator is written in terms of these operators. So, if we call a speed a proton spin, it is clear that it is the addition of these three spins with respect to the center of mass of each quark. So, yes, I spins represent the center of charge and therefore are uh, Dirac spin operators, but we have to add this additional term in terms of the center of mass spins. So, finally, this is the final picture. It is impossible that the addition of the red spins, the center of charge spins, which corresponds to the spin Dirac operators, can never give rise to the spin of the proton. It is the addition of the black ones, which will give rise to the total spin of the proton. And therefore, in my opinion, there is no proton spin crisis. We have to include in the phenomenological model the addition or this term in terms of the separation between these two points. Well, this work was published in this paper, but uh, people interested in, in this classical picture of uh, a Dirac particle can also get these documents of a lecture course I, I lecture at the University of Country, or oh, you can contact me. Some of the calculations are performed with Mathematica or with the Dynamic Solver, and with this we end these two lecture calls concerning these nice features. One, the internal frequency of the electron and the problem related to the proton spin crisis. Additional lectures concerning this classical description of a Dirac particle can be found, can be found in, in these other uh, videos. Thank you very much for your attention.